Now we're going to see an example of a ball hitting a wall and we're going to use the concept of impulse to figure out the force of between the ball and the wall as it collides with the wall. All right, so it says here that the amount of contact lasts about 10 milliseconds. So there's a time in contact with the wall. The ball with a mass of five kilograms, sounds like a medicine ball, doesn't it? Hits the wall with an angle of 53.1 degrees relative to the horizontal. Then it ricochets away from the wall with an angle of 36.9 degrees relative to the horizontal. The initial velocity, 20 meters per second. The final velocity, 10 meters per second. So how do we go about doing this? Well, first of all, let's think about the, the concept of impulse. We know that impulse can be defined as the force between the two objects, in this case, the ball and the wall, the force times the time of contact, so delta T, like that, all right? Impulse can also be defined, impulse can also be defined as the change in the momentum of an object. So if there's an impulse, let's say the, the uh, ball experiences an impulse by hitting the wall, and so that will cause a change in momentum of that ball. Now, assuming that there's friction between the ball and the wall, so there'll be a force in the x direction that does not require any friction, but there will also be a force in the y direction. So uh, what we can assume is that there's going to be a force in the x direction, and we can assume that there's going to be a force in the y direction between the wall and the ball, or better, better, better said, the, the wall will exert a force on the ball, both in the x direction and in the y direction, which means that the momentum of the ball is going to change in the x direction and the momentum of the ball is going to change in the y direction because of that force. We can also look at it graphically. So if we draw a graph of the impulse, you can say that um, the force will be on the vertical axis, the time on the horizontal axis, and a typical collision probably will look like this, where initially, when the contact is initially made, there's not a lot of force between the ball and the wall, but as the collision continues on in the process, the force will increase, reach a maximum, and then begins to decrease and goes back to zero. Now, what we're going to find here is not the force as a function of time, but probably the average force. So we can probably replace that by this rectangular shape, assuming the force is instantaneous, stays at the same level, and drops off instantaneously at the end, in such a way that the area underneath this dashed line is the same as the area underneath the curved line. So we're going to find the average force in the x direction and the average force in the y direction. At some later videos, we'll deal with a non-constant force like that or a non-approximated force. All right, so in order for us to find the force, we can set these two equal to each other. We can say that the force times delta t, and of course, I'm going to first do it in the x direction. So let's say the force in the x direction times delta t equals the change in momentum in the x direction, or the force in the x direction uh, times delta t is equal to the mass times the change in the velocity in the x direction. Right, that's what momentum is, mass times velocity. And so we can say that the force in the x direction times the change in time is equal to mass times v final minus v initial. Now notice momentum is a vector quantity, so we want to make sure that we put the right signs in on the before and the after the collision. All right, so now I can say that force in the x direction is equal to mass times velocity final minus velocity initial divided by the elapsed time in the collision. And notice in the x direction, we have a mass of five kilograms. That's of course independent of the direction. V final, well the final velocity, well notice here, we have a velocity initial in this direction, velocity final in that direction. It looks like we're gonna have to find the components of this velocity. So here we can say that in initial, we'll have a velocity initial in the y direction, and we have a velocity initial in the x direction, which is equal to velocity initial times what angle? Well, if this is the angle theta initial, then this must also be theta initial because those are alternate interior angles. And if the angle is 53.1 degrees, then of course V initial in the X direction is adjacent to that angle. So we can say that V initial in the X direction is equal to V initial times the cosine of theta initial or 20 meters per second times the cosine of 53.1 degrees. I'm writing a little bit over my F sub X, but I'm running out of room here. The cosine of 53.1 degrees, that's an interesting angle, that's actually equal to 0.6. So this would be equal to 12 meters per second. Notice that's in a negative direction. The final velocity, let me use a different color for that. 
So here we have a final velocity, uh, so v final in the y direction, and we have a v final in the x direction. So v final in the y direction, if this is theta final right here, um, that means that this will be the opposite component to the angle, so that would be v final times the sine of theta final. So in this case, that's 10 meters per second times the sine of theta final would be the sine of 36.9 degrees, which happens to be also 0.6, so this would be equal to 6 meters per second. Okay, sine of 36.9, yes, that's 0.6. And of course, v final in the x direction would be equal to v final times d, that would be the cosine of theta final, which is equal to 10 meters per second times the cosine of 36.9 degrees, which is 0.8, so that would be equal to 8 meters per second. So now we have the x and y components of the initial momentum and the final momentum because we have the initial and final velocities before and after the collision. All right, so coming back over here, v final, and remember this is in the x direction, so v final in the x direction right here is 8 meters per second, and that's a positive 8, so 8 meters per second, minus the initial velocity in the x direction, and so this velocity in the direction is this velocity right here, which is a minus 12 meters per second. So minus times a minus 12 meters per second. So it is very important with momentum that you keep the direction correct and divide that by the change in time, which is 10 milliseconds, which is 0.01 seconds, 1 100 of a second. All right, so what do we have? We have 8 minus a minus 12, that's a plus 12, that's 20 meters per second, times 5 is 100 kilogram meters per second, divided by 0 0.01, that's like multiplying times 100, so 100 times 100 is 10,000, so this is equal to 10,000 kilograms meters per second, let's see here, kilograms meters per second, notice what will be the units? We have kilograms, meters per second squared. Ah, I'm scared, so that would be kilograms, meters per second squared. And of course, kilogram meters per second squared is newtons. So that would be, that's equal to 10,000 newtons. So the force required, the average force over that 0 0.01 seconds to cause the momentum to change as it does in the x direction will require a force in the x direction of 10,000 newtons. So that's the force in the x direction. So now we need to do the same for the y direction. So the force in the y direction should be equal to, same equation, would be the mass times v final in the y direction minus v final in the x direction, uh, in the v initial in the x direction, v initial in the y direction. Oh, I keep saying wrong things. Sorry about that. Remember, this is x and this is y direction right here, all divided by the change in the time. So again, we have a five kilogram ball. The V final in the y direction, that would be a minus six meters per second, minus six meters per second, minus the V initial in the y direction. Initially in the y direction, we had, did we calculate it? We have a V in the x direction. No, we did not calculate it. Sorry about that. Let's quickly calculate it. So V initial in the y direction is equal to V initial times the sine of 53.1 degrees. So it would be, um, let's see here, 20 meters per second. 20 meters per second times the sine of 53.1 degrees, which is equal to 0.6. So this is equal to 12 meters per second. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That is not correct. Sine of 53 is 8, so it would be 16 meters per second. Okay, almost made a mistake there. All right. So, uh, V initial in the Y direction, and that would be a minus, right? So minus times a minus 16 meters per second. There we go. And the whole thing divided by 0 0.01 second. Uh, we're talking about 10 milliseconds here. So that 0 0.01 seconds. All right, so minus times a minus is plus. That's plus 16. Minus 6 is plus 10 times 5 is 50 divided by 0 0.01, that's like times 100, 50 times 100 is 5,000. So this is equal to 5,000, and the units are newtons. So the force, again, that would be the average force in the y direction would be 5,000 newtons, and here we have the average force in the x direction, 10,000 newtons. 
force is also a vector quantity, and so we need to know the direction. So in this case, for the x direction, it will be to the right, so it's positive. For the y direction, it will be up, which is positive as well. So in this case, if we want to write it as a vector quantity, we can say that force in the y direction as a vector is equal to 5,000 newtons in the positive y direction, like that. And we can say that the force in the x direction as a vector is equal to 10,000 newtons in the positive x direction. So we can write it as a vector. Oh, and of course, I want to write newtons. Newtons in the x direction, like that. And that's how we do that.